in today's video. We're talking progressive overload. Welcome to the video guys, my name is Tyler, also known as the Fit Chemist, and I help people take control of their lives by taking control of their fitness and nutrition habits so that ultimately we can lead healthier and happier lives. So if you're new here, welcome, please consider subscribing, turn those notification bells on so you don't miss when I post a new video, and if you are returning, welcome back, I am so glad that you are here. On this channel, we've done the How to Diet series already, so if you're interested in losing fat, go ahead and check that out. I've also covered bulking recommendations, but there's been one topic I've wanted to cover, and I figured it's time to finally do a series on this, and that is how to design your own training program. I recently finished Eric Helms' Strength Pyramid book, so I figured what I would do is just summarize all of the key concepts from that book put that into a series for you guys so that way you can come up with your own custom training plans. I just wanna say Eric Helms came up with the strength pyramid. I did not come up with that myself. So I will be linking his book in the description of all the videos in this series. And as you can see from the thumbnail, obviously I took some inspiration from that, but it does make the most sense, right? Because at the bottom of the pyramid, that's gonna be the base and the foundation of your program. And as we move up that pyramid, those variables are gonna become less and less important. In this series, I'm gonna follow that same format. So what we're gonna to do today is talk about progressive overload which is going to be the foundation of any sound training program and then by the time we get to the end of this series we're going to be talking about the less important stuff so whether you're someone who's looking to design your own custom plan or if you're a coach looking how to design plans for new clients let's get into it Before we dive into the topic of progressive overload, I do need to say by far the most important thing is going to be adherence. What I like to tell people is that you're gonna get better results putting in 100% consistency with a B plus plan rather than having 80% consistency of an A plus plan. So the first thing that I have on my program design form, I ask new clients or I ask myself when I'm writing a program for me, how many days am I going to 100% commit to the gym? Not 95%, not 90%, not 85%. How many days am I going to 100% commit to going to the gym? It makes absolutely no sense to give clients a four day program if they're only gonna be able to go to the gym three days. I feel like this is intuitive and you think that people would know not to do that, but I feel like they try to overreach a little bit and they're like, oh yeah, I'll go four days. But you really have to ask yourself how many days are you going to 100 commit because if you start missing days guess what you're going to start getting down on yourself you're going to get discouraged about the program you're not going to want to continue you're going to fall off the wagon so i'd rather see someone be 100 consistent with something that is a little less optimal on paper but still get those results so now that we got that out of the way we can talk about progressive overload the definition of progressive overload which is the most important thing for a training program it's going to be continually challenging your musculoskeletal system through manipulation of the following variables. We have volume, intensity, and frequency. Volume is the total amount of work performed. So that means you have sets times reps times load. So for example, if you did 225 pounds for three sets of eight, that would be 5,400 pounds for your total volume. To simplify this, you can just do a number of sets per week. It's a little bit easier to keep track that way rather than actually going through calculating the volume for each of your workouts and comparing from workout to workout or from program to program. So you can just say number of sets per week and move on from that. Intensity can be described in two ways so one would be intensity of the load which would be a percent of your one rep max so how close are you to your one rep max or you can also have an intensity of effort or a rate of perceived exhaustion so RPE sometimes this is also called RIR repetitions in reserve so that's another great way to measure intensity but believe it or not having a pump or being sore the next day is not actually how you measure intensity Frequency is then exactly what it sounds like. So how many times are you hitting that muscle group per week? So what I would recommend is keeping this variable fixed. So when you design the training program, let's say you wanna go with the push-pull leg split, you know, each of those, you're gonna have two push days, two pull days, and two leg days. So your frequency for those muscle groups is gonna be twice per week. So what I would say is keep those consistent and then worry about changing your volume and intensity from week to week. And we'll talk about that more in the next video. Now that we know the three important variables that are related to progressive overload, I now wanna give you guys some practical recommendations. So what I'm gonna do is throw up a screenshot from Eric's book that talks about general recommendations for each of these variables. 
Starting with volume, you can see we have anywhere from 10 to 20 sets per week. What I would suggest is if you're a beginner, start on the lower side of that. So you wanna be closer to 10 sets per week. If you're intermediate, I'd say somewhere between 10 and 15. And then if you're advanced, anywhere between 15 to 20. One recommendation I do have though, is to find the minimum number of sets that you need to progress per week. Because what happens is when you plateau, we need to manipulate one of these variables. So we have to increase volume or intensity. And oftentimes that's going to come from increasing your number of sets per week. So if you're already doing 20 sets per week and you stall out, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have to increase that to maybe, I don't know, 22, 24, 25, whatever that number is to get you progressing again. And you're just gonna have to keep doing that over time. And eventually, once you have too many sets per week, you're gonna have to change your frequency. So again, what I would recommend is do the bare minimum that you need to progress progress is still progress it doesn't matter if you're doing 40 sets a week or 15 sets per week if you're progressing on 15 sets per week do not increase that past that when it comes to intensity it kind of depends here whether you want to train for strength or if you want to train for hypertrophy so strength would be increasing your one rep maxes and hypertrophy would be building muscle mass and size so if you're after strength, you wanna do a majority of your training in the one to six rep range. And then if you're going after hypertrophy, you wanna do anywhere from eight to 20 reps. The last variable then is frequency. So as you can see, recommended minimum of two times per week. Stop doing bro splits if you're doing them and just hitting one muscle group per week. It makes no sense to hit chest once on Monday and then wait an entire week again to hit chest the next Monday. You should be doing it at least twice per week. There are times where you can do it more. So maybe let's say you're following a full body Body program that's either three days or even five days you can have higher frequencies but when you do that you need to be mindful of the volume and intensity so those workouts would not be as hard as a workout if you're only doing it two times per week so you need to be mindful of recovery based on your frequency I do want to point out one meta-analysis done by Brad Schoenfeld and colleagues that did show that training at least twice per week is superior for hypertrophy. So yes, this is science back. Again, stop doing the bro splits and only hitting a muscle group once per week. You're not going to see optimal gains using that. Something else you also need to consider with frequency is muscle overlap. So something like a deadlift is primarily a leg movement, but when you're doing that, you're still activating your back, you're using your lats and your traps, or something like a bench press, you know, it's primarily a chest movement, but you're still using your triceps and your front delts. So that's definitely something to consider is that there is crossover between certain exercises. So take that into account when you are writing your program. That's all we need to cover for the base of the pyramid. So we talked about progressive overload and then the three variables, volume, intensity and frequency and the recommendations for each of those variables so now we need to know how to actually implement that so in the next video we're going to be talking about periodization and progression all right guys that's it for today's video i hope that you enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments down below and again if you are new here be sure to subscribe turn those notification bells on so you don't miss when i post new videos because i post new videos every single friday you do not want to miss when i go live and with that I'll see you in the next video.